What is up guys? It's your boy Never Touch Grass Cacus and today you did it again didn't you gamer? You waited until the final week to do all of your prep for the new Destiny 2 season. Well don't worry because so did I. So in this video we're going to be showcasing a ton of different tips for things you can do within this final week that will give you a significant advantage, a big head start when the new season launches. Now of course I always get people saying well just enjoy the game and play your own pace that is totally fine gamers but it's also totally fine to absolutely rip through the content be raid ready for day one and have all your friends going how did he do that already and that's who i am so let's get started here with the fact that it's going to be a pretty interesting prep because we really don't know too much about season 22. in fact i'm still calling it season 22 because we don't know the official name yet all of that stuff will be revealed in the destiny 2 showcase which airs just a few hours before the season goes live. With that being said, we do know some very important things. First of all, let's talk about everyone's favorite prep subject, bounty prepping. And importantly guys, I think this is actually one of the times where bounty prepping is going to matter the least. Now, what exactly is bounty prepping? Well, it's doing bounties and then simply not turning them in. If you save them for next season, then you can turn them all in and get all of your experience gains when you're leveling up a brand new season's pass and seasonal artifact. And obviously, you do want to level up your seasonal artifact relatively fast and have most of it, if not all of it, un locked leading up to that day one raid because the seasonal artifact perks are incredibly powerful. However, remember that the raid has been officially announced to release on September 1st and that is actually the second Friday after season 22 goes live. So you're actually going to have more than a week to play the new season before the raid launches and therefore you do actually have a significant amount of time to just naturally level up and gain experience within that new season. However, saving a few bounties is definitely still a good idea and for goodness sakes if you're playing right now don't turn in any bounties. Might as well just hold on to them. Remember that the bounty ranking goes firstly, uh, weekly bounties give the most experience and then daily bounties and lastly repeatable bounties. But there isn't many sources of weekly bounties left. You're really looking at Shahan in the Cosmodrome, then you've got Hawthorne and her clan bounties in the tower. On the moon you have Eris Morn offering two and the Lectern of Enchantment also offering two. On Europa you have Varix offering two. In Xur's Treasure Hoard uh, you have Star Horse's gold tier bounty. On the Dreaming City you have Petra offering two and then a new one is going to be Nimbus on Neomuna offering one. Now keep in mind that doing all of this and maximizing your XP gains mainly matters for your seasonal artifact and that's because the most efficient way to increase your season's pass is to now whip out your credit card since Bungie now allows you to buy level 1 to 100 day 1 of a new season. Welcome to gaming in 2023. But speaking of season's pass, I actually have a huge tip involving season 21 season's pass and if you haven't claimed everything in your season's pass you actually don't want to do that. Specifically, if you have any unclaimed Deep Sight Harmonizers, you might be able to do something very interesting next season. And that's because, as you can see right here, if you go to Bungie.net and sign in, you can access your previous season. So as you can see, I left some exotic engrams in case I needed them this season. I can claim them and they just pop up in-game right here. But that could potentially mean that if you have extra deep sight harmonizers that you don't need for unlocking weapon patterns this season, you could potentially save them and withdraw them in season 22 to utilize on brand new craftable weapons and potentially, you know, get a new crafted god tier weapon like day one, which is obviously very advantageous. Now, will that 100% work? I don't know. They just introduced deep sight harmonizers this season, but for me, considering I don't need them right now, might as well risk it for the biscuit and try to save them for season 22. Now, normally this would also apply to armor. You could withdraw armor and it would be your exact level, but remember the level cap is not increasing within season 22. So if you reach the max 
pinnacle level right now of I think 1810, you are completely good for next season. And really that means the only levels that are going to matter are coming from your seasonal artifact, which, you know, kind of does increase the value of doing stuff like bounty prepping because it's all just about XP. But moving on from there, let's talk about some stuff you want to stock up on. First of all, prime engrams and potentially legendary engrams. This has worked for me the past several seasons, but if you simply decode your prime engrams in Season 22, you have the chance for them to become some of the new world drop weapons that Bungie always adds. So obviously, better get the new stuff than dismantle them now for like no reason. Now, the next thing you want to stock up on is resources. However, Bungie has actually gotten rid of a ton of resources like planetary materials as of late, so really now it's just glimmer and then legendary shards for general purpose use. Then for upgrading your gear, you want upgrade modules, enhancement prisms, and ascendant shards, as well as enhancement cores. And then for crafting weapons, you want resonant alloy, and then ascendant alloy, and that's pretty much it. Remember, you also have stuff like finest matter weave that you can turn into enhancement cores and the same goes for rainmakers you can turn that into glimmer so if you have those laying around uh, those can be useful as well if you have a ton of glimmer right now and you're going to be playing during this week well turn that glimmer into certain cosmetics make sure all of your ships and sparrows in your inventory are full and you fill them with the most expensive ones in terms of glimmer because then you can get back to full glimmer and when the new season starts you can dismantle those ships and sparrows and so on and you will get glimmer back for when you actually need it next season if you're running low now in addition to this guys keep in mind with like shards and prisms and so on Bungie is increasing uh, the inventory inventory cap from 10 to 30 but if you're someone who stores them in your postmaster uh you're actually kind of losing it because you're not going to be able to store them in your postmaster any longer so if they are in your postmaster next season don't withdraw them kind of keep it in there until you know the last minute until you finally for sure need them now moving on from there, the next thing you want to be doing is prepping for a new meta by investing in things that are getting better next season. So the first great example of that is that Bungie released an article talking about all of the different exotic armor pieces getting buffed next season. And you can see my video on that subject linked up above, but obviously, you know, taking those out of the vault, infusing them up to a good light level and stuff like that, potentially masterworking them if you have extra ascendant shards left over and stuff, that could be a good idea. We know that stuff is quite literally getting better. Now, another example of this is stasis. So we have not had stasis as a featured element this entire year. So it is very, very likely likely that stasis is going to be a featured element next season. So if you have some amazing stasis weapons, uh, exotic armor pieces that work with stasis builds, stuff like that, again, infusing that stuff, kind of getting it ready is a great idea for next season. And another example of this is hand cannons. We know hand cannons are getting some big PVE buffs, so if your Fatebringer is just toiling away in your vault, might be time to take it out, and we may be getting an article later this week detailing more buffs and nerfs to weapons coming next season, so keep an eye for that. And lastly, guys, again, because of that delayed raid launch date, this is a bit of a less intense prep. You don't have to go as hard, but keep in mind that it's going to be a reprised raid. So whether that's Crota's End or Wrath of the Machine or heck, the Leviathan Raid from Destiny 2, whatever it ends up being, we will find out during the showcase. But that also means that you can go back and watch, you know, I certainly have old raid guides that will still be very relevant or whoever's raid guide so that you can learn the mechanics mechanics for the upcoming raid. They won't be identical mechanics, but often they're very similar and it will give you a great advantage within that reprised raid launching September 1st. And so guys, that is it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.